All righty. Hello, everybody. Sharon Kathy back with another video, but this video is a little bit different, mainly because of the fact that this is going to be more of a hey, sister girl, girlfriend, I got you, girl. <sighs> So if you hear any banging, it's because he's fixing something in the next room, okay? All right, so um, I titled this video, 12 Things to Think About Before Getting Married. I do have a piece of paper down here, so if you see me looking down, that's the reason why, okay? All right, so I've been married for quite some time, and you know, every marriage has its thing, you know, ups, downs, lefts, rights, you want to chop them in the throat he can't stand you you can't stand him and then you guys are good again right so i said you know what let me let me see if i can help the youth with some of the intricacies of marriage because you don't know about marriage until you get into it right all right and to all my ladies that all all, all my ladies that are already married i'm sure you can identify with all of these things that are very, very important, okay? So we start off with you you meeting the guy, right? So you meet the guy and you like, okay, you know, he's cool, you know, I kinda like him, he's cool. And you start dating. Now this right here is very important, the dating, the time frame in which you date. You should take your time, right? Because there's no need to rush right there's no need to rush you you can you know go home and relax and he can go home and relax and then you guys go on another date and another date and another date i'd say to do that for a while months you know drag it on out a little bit you know to make sure that you vet them correctly because a lot of times when you get with people too fast you miss a lot of things and a lot of guys like to go fast so that you can miss a lot of things, okay? I have seen it with my friends. I have seen it with a lot of people, okay? So be careful of that. Number one, it's very important, common interests. Common interests are important. Do you guys like the same music? Do you like the same TV shows? Do you have the same sense of humor? You know, do you find the same things funny? Do you like the same type of foods? You know, there are a lot of different things that is very important for you guys in order for you to get along. Do you like, or are you interested in liking their quirks, right? Or the things that they love. Kind of like when guys, you know, they'll sit down and sometimes watch a, a some weird girly show with you, you know, but they're doing it to spend time. Are you willing to sit with him and do the same thing? That's important, right? Because there has to be reciprocity. There has to be both. It can't just be one-sided. All right, so common interest is one. Number two, their family background is important, right? So you want to make sure that even your families are aligned with each other because it will cause issues down the line. Uh, for instance, let's say you're German and your spouse's family is African, but you're German and half of your German family were halfway Nazis and hated black people. <laughs> And then you have all the Africans that feel enslaved by white people, you know what I mean? Like, so it becomes an issue, kind of like the Meghan Markle, Prince Harry type thing. They should have done some research, right? Okay, so that's kind of where I'm coming from with background. You know, what is his family like? How is his relationship with his mom? How is his relationship with his dad? How is his relationship with himself? You know what I mean? Like, just sit back, relax. You have time. You have time. You're the catch, right? Okay. So, observe. 
and pay attention to how he interacts with people, how he interacts with his family, you know, how highly he regards his family, how much time he spends with his family. You know, if it's something that you're interested in, okay, make sure that your family, you know, your family values align, you guys like the same type of foods, all that kind of stuff, right? Because, you know, um, for instance, I have Caribbean background, Hispanic and Caribbean background, and it was important for me to marry someone that had the same background because of the type of foods that I like to eat. And I found that in the past when I dated American guys that they didn't care for a lot of the Caribbean food because they thought it was too spicy. That's a no-go for me. I need my oxtails, I need my rice and peas, I need my plants and I need roti, I need all of it, okay? So I can't get with a guy that doesn't eat my food because it's going to be miserable right okay number three what is their disposition disposition what kind of person are they you know are they a positive person are they a negative person do they have a problem for every solution you know or do they have a solution for every problem are they the type to complain all the time are they positive? You know, like there are different things that you have to pay attention to because if you're having a conversation with your man and it always goes left because he doesn't understand positive reinforcement or he doesn't understand things of that nature, then things aren't going to go well. <laughs> things are not going to go well, okay? And, um, you gotta watch out for like fiery tempers and you know people that are just like quick to jump and all that kind of stuff so disposition is important number four their morals and the things that they place value in do they value their woman or do they value their things you know like do they value education or do they not care what they are you know that stuff is important because you can value um, you can value home life with your family and he could not so how does that work like how does it work if you value home life and he doesn't you know so you guys get together and that's something you guys never touched on and so what will end up happening is the whole time you're with this person, you're trying to sway them your way and they're trying to sway you their way and all this kind of stuff. And it creates issues, you know, within your, within your marriage. So it's very, very important to get that out of the way. Okay. Um, number five, religion or spirituality and how a person connects to spirit, if at all. You know, you have some people that are atheists, you have people that are Catholic, you have people that are Baptist, all that kind of stuff. Religion is important because how you see the world, how you see God, how you see the universe, or if you don't see him at all, that matters in a relationship. Okay, can you pray together? Can you guys, can you guys meditate together? You know, are both of you at peace where you can kind of connect on that level? Is it something, you know, is that something you guys can do? You know, can you just not believe in God together? You know, like, that's important. That's very, very important because, you know, let's say a woman's getting up going to church every Sunday, you know, getting up going to church every single Sunday. And her husband's laying in the bed. He don't care nothing about church. And she going to get the word and all this kind of stuff. And she's feeling connected to God and she's singing and she's praising. And when she get home... You know, he's laying there with an attitude or something. You know, what does that do to the girl? Like, what does that do to the wife? So, this, what you call it, is bothering me. Um, so, what does that do to the wife? Like, how does that make, you know, spiritually, you know, the spiritual connection? Um, it should be more, you know, in a line with each other. If, if you like church and you like God, find someone that likes church and likes God. You know, I'm not saying he has to go every single Sunday or you have to go every Sunday, but just make sure that that aligns. Spirituality, um, if you guys like to talk about manifestation or any of those things or, 
you know, the law of attraction or the secret, any of those things, make sure that you guys have those same interests and that you can speak about it on a, on a level, on a high level or on the level that you are on, you know, um, if it's hard to have conversations with someone, then you guys are not on the same level. Whether you're below them or whether you're above them, it doesn't matter. You have to be able to speak the same language, okay? <clears throat> now, number six, this is when things are getting really, really serious, okay? You have to make sure that you have an undeniable connection. And I'm not saying that you have to have this super twin flame connection, but you have to make sure that there is chemistry between you two, meaning sexually, you guys can please each other. Uh, mentally, you guys can keep each other aroused, you know, that you guys are still interested in each other, vibrant, and you're very much attracted to each other. Uh, that is very important, you know? Like, pay attention to the things that he likes. Do a lot of the things that he likes. And you do some of the things that you like. And you guys make it balanced, you know? Don't make it all about, like, one person doing, you know, something. And you're trying to, and you're mad because he doesn't understand, you know, romance. And he doesn't understand this. But it's like, what are you mad at? Because you should have known that in the beginning, you know? You should have known that in the beginning. Homeboy was not that dude. But a lot of times, you know, as women, we get caught up in that and we think otherwise, you know? Okay. Um, number seven, future plans. Ten-year plans are important. What is your ten-year plan like, you know? Any guy that you're dating for more than two months or three months that's afraid to have that conversation is not a guy that you want to date, okay? Um, what, what, do you, what do you see your life as? Like, well, how do you see yourself in ten years? You're gonna get, you know, do you think you're gonna be, um, you're gonna get a promotion? Are you gonna switch jobs? Are you gonna go after a different career? That's very, very important. Now, you get married and your husband decides he's been thinking about being an actor and then he shifts careers and then you have to handle all the bills and this is very important. It's very important to make sure that you understand the track that the person is on. If you met them in the entertainment industry, they're in the entertainment industry. If you met them in the corporate world, they're in the corporate world. If they decide to switch, that's something that they need to talk about. Um, um, although I do know that, you know, some people hit walls and they don't necessarily um, know what they want to do or they want to, might get like a life change. They want to do something different. That's fine too, as long as you guys communicate, okay? I'm going to try not to make this long. Next would be uh, children and marriage, right? That's important as well. Do you want children? You know, so let's say I wanted children, but my man didn't want children. That's something that we should know kind of when we're getting serious, because then we can decide if we want to go left or if we want to go right. Okay, ladies, listen, listen, because a lot of times and what I've seen in a lot of other relationships that I were in, was in, men can be very, very selfish. They could be very, very, very selfish and tell you what you want to hear in order to hook you, right? That has happened to a lot of us. So listen and pay attention. Don't be deceived by people telling you one thing and doing another, right? One second they say to you, oh yeah, I want kids, you know? And then every time they see a kid, they're like, I hate kids. I seen a meme today that said, you know, my problem is I want to see how red the flag can get. <laughs> my problem is I want to see how red this flag can get, baby, <laughs> before, I, <laughs> before I get the hint, right? Okay. Number nine, money. Money habits. How they spend. Uh, do they save? Are they in debt? Are they responsible? You know, what is what is their debt to income ratio? Like, you know, now again, this is when you're getting really serious. You know, can they afford to pay the mortgage? You know, and take care of some other miscellaneous things. Um, how are you guys gonna split the bills? Are you gonna split the bills? Is he gonna pay all the bills? Are you gonna pay just the utilities? Are you gonna pay the mortgage and he pay the utilities and everything else? This is important. Don't forget to have these conversations. I need y'all to write this down, okay? Because it's every single thing 
on here that you're going to touch on within your marriage. You can't get away from any of these topics in your marriage. You can't. You can't. Show me a marriage that never talked about any of these things, okay? All right, let's move on. Um, yeah, their style, their tendencies, you know, does he like Louis Vuitton and, you know, um, is he about himself? Does he like to splurge on Birkin bags and, you know, does it, is he into stuff like that or is he frugal as hell, you know, to where he won't pay for nothing or he don't want to take you out to eat because he doesn't want to spend any money or that type of stuff can be obnoxious like in the end you know or during the marriage so you guys decide to get married and he's frugal now you know you'll get taken anywhere or you, you know he's not coming up with reasons to take you out he's not doing anything nice or anything like that for you that's going to cause a problem you know in in your in your marriage there are a lot of women that don't really like that you know they don't have to go out and they don't have to get bags and they don't have to do anything you know but my advice is to find someone that's kind of like you you know that has some of the same qualities as you to where like if you like to go out to eat and he likes to go out to eat then you guys are good you know but if you like to go out to eat and he always wants to stay at home you guys are gonna have issues because Somebody gonna wanna go out and somebody gonna wanna stay in. And it's gonna be a lot of compromising back and forth, back and forth. It's like, look, get somebody that's like you and call it a day, right? All right. Um, next would be the non-negotiables. You guys need to discuss what is an absolute no-go and you're out the door or marriage is done or, you know what I mean? Like for instance, domestic violence, no-go. You know, um, what's another non-negotiable uh, cheating, you know, but see, that's tricky now. That's tricky. I have seen people in relationships that have cheated and they was just like, all right, whatever, we going to get past it. You know what I mean? So I've seen people kind of get over it, but that wasn't a non-negotiable for them. Really think about what your non-negotiable is and what you literally cannot deal with. And you guys need to discuss that. He needs to discuss his non-negotiables. You need to discuss your non-negotiables. Hey, we're not crossing this line ever. And that that's where it stands with me, right? Number 11, love languages, okay? You need to know what their love language is. Is it quality time, acts of service? Is it gifts, you know? Um, there are a bunch of different love languages. There's a book called Love Languages. Um, look it up and just find out what someone's style is and the way that they show love we have providers you know that that's the way they show love or quality time makes them feel loved or you know me myself I like gifts you know gifts is a form of love for me like I like little gifts um, it makes me feel like you're thinking about me you know and I think that, I don't know, whatever, whatever. Acts of service, you know, doing things for me, relieving me, alleviating me of some of the stress or worry that I have is very important too. Like, you know, can you take the, the clothes off the dryer for me if you see the dryer full and I'm doing something else? You know, that's important to me. Um, just make sure that you're vocal about that because, you know, no one's going to know how you feel. I don't know why the back of my head itch like this. I don't know, I think something's pulling, it's all weird. Um, if you don't communicate it, it won't get met, okay? And nobody's a mind reader, whether it's a male or a female. Love language and then communication style, you know? Um, are you a talker or are you more introverted and you don't speak at all? Which one are you, you know? Some people shut down and they talk later. And then you have some people that speak right away right so you have to make sure that like who are you are you the person that wants to get it out and open and be done with it or are you a person that wants to let it marinate a little bit and then revisit that is a conversation you need to have okay so when faced with confrontation how do you handle x y and z are you the type to you know go away or do you want to sit down and talk about it is it too much to talk about it that kind of thing so 
that's another thing that's important okay next oh that's it that was 12 so if you can get through all these things then you are literally on the best track possible it's damn near foolproof okay like if you can find an issue outside of this besides like a mother-in-law or something like that but see we covered that we covered that in the family because you was paying attention to how he was with his moms right okay so friends homeboys pay attention to all of that okay because it's important it will tell you what phase of life that person is in you know and hopefully he's watching you too for all the people that are cross watching like you know males um pay attention to those things in your your woman as well okay um also it's very important to just work on the areas that you struggle with <clears throat> work on the areas that you struggle with and don't give up you know if you're having a problem with watching this one show with him like work on it if it makes him happy you know if he appreciates it then good right um and this is the last thing before i end this video most men wife you up if they know what they want like if it's in if it's if they know what they want they will go get it do not and i repeat do not wait too long for the spark and for the this and the that. Oh, we're going to feel fireworks maybe after. Um, no, we're just going to date another year. Homegirl, don't do that. Don't do it to yourself. Because all he's doing is getting the milk, the cow, the cake, the damn ice cream. He's getting all of that. And he does not necessarily have to do anything different. So, um, I wouldn't recommend like past three, four, five months, depending on your age. Like if you're older, the time frame in which you date is actually a little bit, <laughs> a lot shorter, you know? So if you're past 35, let's say, you're past 35, past 40, I'd say about six months of dating, almost to a year is when you know if you want to be with this person or not, right? When you're 18, 17, 16, 15, you, you got to get some years in. You know why? Because you don't learn a lot until after your 20s. You know, when you hit your 30s and you're going into your 40s and you're going into your 50s, there's so many cycles of life. And the worst thing you can kind of do is commit and then they hit a midlife crisis or some type of change or some type of elevation and you're still here and you're wondering why all of a sudden your woman wants to, to fly to Barcelona and live there and raise cattle, you know? Um, and that happens. Oh my God. That happens, you know what I mean? So you have to be very mindful of that. She wants to move to Barcelona. She don't want to be with you no more. She wants to be a, a what is it, a goat herder. And now you got to go to Barcelona and you don't want to go to Barcelona after you guys been together for 10 years since you were 17. Come on. You know, take your time. That's what I'm saying. You know, if you're young, take your time. In your 20s, have your fun. By the 30s is when you should start really thinking about maturing some. And, um settle it down all right so anyway uh video is about to be 25 minutes or you know in the 20s so i hope that this advice helped you young ladies and slow it on down okay <laughs>